Hello, Leo. Welcome. Welcome to your Saturn retrograde bonus reading. There is quite a bit of activity going on right now, specifically in Pisces. And this reading is intended to connect with the Saturn retrograde in Pisces, which begins on June the 17th. On June the 30th, Neptune is also going retrograde, also in Pisces. And Pluto has been in retrograde since May the 1st and will be shifting from Aquarius and then into Capricorn on June the 11th. So essentially, we can now officially say that we have firmly entered retrograde season for 2023. This Saturn retrograde is going to last until November the 4th. And so this bonus reading is intended to cover that roughly approximately four month period. Okay, Saturn retrograde energy is energy that encourages us all to slow down, whether you like it or not, Leo. <laughs> I know you can be a very fast, a very energetic sign in that fifth house of play and creativity and self-expression and recreation, but you may as well embrace it because it's happening. <laughs> so you may as well just go with the flow of this. It does provide us with the perfect opportunity to do some inner work, some shadow work. And with this being in Pisces, that could well be manifested through some dream work. Um, so prioritizing a healthy sleep schedule would be a good idea right now. And maybe... Um, revisiting or starting up or just keeping on top of a dream journal as well. Um, I do have a quick message um, when I was looking into the energy of the planet, specifically for this Saturn retrograde, which um, might not apply to everybody. So just bear with me. Saturn takes about 30 years to full circle through the entire zodiac. So if you are or have turned 30, 60 or maybe even 90 in 2023. So that's basically if your birthday is in 1993, 1963, or 1933, um, this retrograde is going to have a very significant impact on you. For those people, this is huge, big shake-up energy. The ending or the beginning of a serious relationship, a big move, a relocation, to a new home, town, or perhaps even country or continent for some of you, maybe. <laughs> this could represent the birth of a child, a pregnancy, a marriage. It could represent several of those things all mixed up together. So yeah, this is, it's kind of a big deal um, for those people. And this is going to especially impact anybody that is um, a mutable sign. So we're talking Pisces, obviously, Gemini, Virgo, and Sagittarius. So if you know a Gemini, Pisces, Virgo, or Sagittarius, or you are a Gemini, Pisces, Virgo, or Sagittarius that is turning 30, 60, or maybe even 90 in 2023, this four-month period is going to be flipping huge. Um, maybe that's not you. Obviously, this is a Leo reading, um, but perhaps you know somebody. Um, who ticks some or maybe all of these boxes. So if that's the case, you can pay attention and maybe even offer support as and where appropriate. Okay, what I'm just getting on the table for you here, Leo, is your retrograde spread here today. This line down here is your revisit. This is something that you will be revisiting during this retrograde period. This line down here is your reflect. This is what you'll be reflecting on during this period. And then over here, we have reveal, something that will be revealed to you. I'm just laying down here. This is for the extended reading, what you can expect on the other side of this retrograde. But that is for the extended only. Let's set us up with a theme first. The theme for this reading here today for Leo is the black cat. This is a card of contradiction. Some will see good fortune, while others see a curse. The cat herself remains unchanged, a cat. No more, no worse. Interesting. So this is definitely an energy that could very well be speaking about 
your mindset, Leo, and the way that you're viewing your circumstances and your situations. I can see we've started straight off with the four of cups here, which is very much that energy of meh. Really, no thanks. Can't be bothered. Don't want it. Not interested. It's apathy. It's boredom. It's disappointment. It's it's just a big bag of meh, basically. Um, and this is something you'll be revisiting. And it's connected to the Ten of Swords, which is Gemini energy. This is Cancer energy up here. It's connected to the Ten of Swords and the Emperor. The Emperor being, of course, Aries energy. You're revisiting pain. You are revisiting pain. The Ten of Swords is absolutely, yes, it's an ending, but it's, it's pain. Predominantly, it's a card of pain. You know, in traditional tarot, this is a card with a person laid on the floor with ten swords smashed into their back. This is not good times. Um, and anybody that knows me as a reader will know I absolutely do not sugarcoat these cards. It's a card of betrayal. It's a card of being backstabbed, potentially, you know, if we're taking that image quite literally. It's, it's a painful ending. It's like a life, a life lesson, but it's, it's a harsh one. It's a brutal one, right? Make sure you learn it because you don't want to repeat this one. But what I'm seeing is a failure to address the pain, to really go into the emotions. And I think... As a therapist, I am very aware that anger is quite often a mask. And underneath that mask is grief. And I feel that's what's going on here for you, Leo. I feel there is a situation here that has caused you grief and sadness and mourning. And you have, as a defense mechanism, worn a mask of anger and self-righteousness and you feel justified to be angry about this situation. It's, it's an ego mechanism of self-defense. We've all done it. I absolutely have done this, certainly done this. This is, it's a legitimate coping mechanism, honestly. You know, if it's too much and you need that processing time, um, obviously anger it's a challenging emotion, but it is one of the easiest It's go-to emotions. Um, and it's like, I think it's this revisiting energy is going to be challenging for you. I think what's coming back to kind of smack you in the face, essentially, is, hey, remember, Leo, that you're in pain. Remember that you're grieving. Remember that this hurts. And I think what you're revisiting here is I think that veil of anger is being lifted and you're revealing the hurt and the pain and the grief that was there the whole time. So it's a difficult thing to revisit. It's a difficult thing to reflect on. It's a difficult thing that's being revealed to you is, oh, it was grief all along. You know, there's like um, there's like a, a picture that I'm visualizing and I've seen it on social media, you know. Uh, I sat with my anger for a while until she revealed her name was really grief or, or something along those lines. So while it's difficult for you to see, oh, yes, there's grief here, I do feel in terms of taking a forward step in this journey of healing, because you always need to heal from the Ten of Swords. I do feel it's a positive step in the right direction for you, Leo, even if it's challenging. It's possibly one of the reasons why Saturn Retrograde is, is helping you with this energy because it, it does give us that pause, that slowdown. Maybe you're having kind of triggering dreams. For some of you, I'm feeling that's very much the case. What you'll be reflecting on is very, 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 very clear to me here today what you will be reflecting on is the end of a relationship with somebody that you deeply deeply cared about an ending that was not very pleasant an ending that you're definitely not very comfortable with an ending that you're not very happy with you're removing the mask of anger 
and taking some time to acknowledge and to respect the pain that's underneath. This is Gemini energy. This is Capricorn energy. And there's a little bit of you in there too. A little bit of Saturn in Leo with the five of wands here. I think there were arguments. I think there was a struggle, possibly some jealousy or some competition or some conflict. A little bit of deflecting or projecting. Definitely discord going on there for you. Possibly somebody chose something else. But I see there is definitely an ending there. Somebody left. Somebody called time. What's being revealed to you during this time is the Fool and the Wheel of Fortune and the Nine of Swords. This is gorgeous. You've got to address this pain. You've got to address this pain, but not just so you can just sit around and wallow in it and, and feel self-pity and feel sorry for yourself. Oh, no, 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 no. No, you've got work to do. You've got work to do because you want this fool and this Wheel of Fortune energy. You absolutely want to welcome this energy with open arms. The fool is gorgeous. It's fearless. It's trusting. It's playful, it's fun, it's adventurous, it's self-mastery, it's what are you waiting for, Leo? It's freedom from all of this challenging energy. The Wheel of Fortune is okay. We've learned the lesson. You know, I said because the Ten of Swords is such a brutal life lesson, please make sure you learn it. This is, this here it is. This is learning that lesson. This is a turning point. This is knowing everything's going to be better from this point onwards. This is rolling with it and embracing the changes, embracing the universe, embracing all the gifts that are being sent to you, embracing the revelations that you are coming to, because this is the reveal path. All you have to get past in order to welcome this fall and wheel of fortune energy into your life is the nine of swords. The nine of swords is more Gemini energy. It is um, Mars in Gemini, Gemini. It's anxiety. It's mental anguish. It's overthinking. It's potentially depression. It's regret. Essentially, it's this pain. So sit with the pain. Consider the pain. Forgive yourself for being hurt if and where that is necessary and appropriate because you've got this energy waiting for you. It's entirely up to you if, should you choose to take that, though. Feel acceptance and peace is right here waiting for you. And I feel this retrograde is going to nudge you in the direction of being able to find the closure that you need from this painful ending. We've got the energy of a romance, pain endings. So it is ended. It has ended. We definitely need to release it so we can embrace something new coming in for you one way or another. And again, we come back to this card of contradiction. Some will see good fortune while others see a curse. A cat herself remains unchanged. A cat, no more, no worse. It is definitely about how you see this, but this rejecting the idea that it even hurts at all is the thing that's been holding you back. Nine of swords here, 10 of swords. Acceptance is, is not about forgetting what happened, Leo or forgetting the pain that it caused. Acceptance isn't about pretending that everything's okay. It isn't about deflecting that pain into anger instead. It's about acknowledging the pain and then making a choice to focus on the new. New things, new places, new people. Things that bring you joy and fulfillment. There's going to be days through this process here. I can see that it's not going to be easy. And then there's going to be days where it feels really good and it feels really easy. And this is a process is a process that is going to be occurring for the Leo collective that I have, I have connected with here for this reading here today. I am going to move this over to an extended. We're going to take a look at what is on the other side of this retrograde for you. I have a whole bunch of clarification to do here and a few other bits and pieces that I want to dig into a little bit deeper here for you, especially want to 
really focus in on this situation on the lovers here and see what's going on because clearly somebody else is involved here, Leo, but they haven't really shown up thus far. It's as it stands. It's, it's about you. And I do feel there is a curiosity here in, with, within some of you in terms of what is going on with this other person. Before I pull you a happy card to finish up this reading here, these cards, this uh, Crystal Power Tarot does have these like little one-line phrases. I've read a couple of them out to you already, but I would like to go through those quickly because it seems a bit of a wasted opportunity to, to ignore them. So Four of Cups, I listen to my heart and follow my knowing. For some of you, there might be a specific message here that really does resonate. So like I said, it's worth doing. Ten of Swords, I see the truth in this ending. The Emperor, I make empowered choices. Lovers, I trust my knowing and make a commitment. The world, I celebrate life and welcome new energy. Five of Wands, I stand my ground and look for peace. The Fool, I am guided and protected on my life journey. The Wheel of Fortune, I trust whatever the universe brings me. And the Nine of Swords, I trust the present moment. We'll finish off with a happy card for the Leo Collective, please. It's a sacral chakra. Go for a drive and sing really loud to your favorite song. Yeah, that's a really, really good reminder that while we're digging through all this challenging stuff, make sure you find some time for fun and to enjoy the small things, to smell the roses, so to speak. Who else got this card uh, for this batch of readings for Saturn Retrograde? I think it was Aquarius. Um, so for some of you, if you're resonating with Aquarius, that might be a connection back and uh, a prompt for you to go and check out that reading too. I will see some of you over in the extended. And for the rest of you, enjoy this period. This is, there's a point to this. Even though it might feel hard in any given moment, there is absolutely a point to this. And it's a very worthwhile pursuit, I would say. Take care.